Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman here, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Saturday, December 21st, 2024. Let's go take a look at what we're tracking here for today as we're as though we're dealing with some cold temperatures in the east for the moment. We're expecting a bone roll temperatures really move in to kind of wrap up 2024. And it's going to become a little bit unsettled. Now, the traveling this weekend is looking excellent for anybody having to perhaps get on an airplane and go somewhere. Not any major weather-related delays except for maybe out on the West Coast. We'll take a look at that. And then we're also going to talk about the cold invasion returning as we go into January. Got a new update on that as well. Now, before we get going, if you're new to the channel, first I want to say thank you for coming on board. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do this man a favor and help us out to grow the channel. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up down below. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our satellite imagery for this morning. This is plain old cold here in the east, my friends. Very chilly here. Uh, see a little bit of precipitation exiting the east coast there just off from New York City. A little bit of light snow up here in the high plains as well, but it's bitterly cold basically from about the eastern half of the United States onward. A little bit milder by late December standards out here in the west. We do have some heavier rains out here on the west coast coming on in. Some very heavy rains. Maybe a few rumbles of thunder not out of the question there uh, for Northern California going up into Oregon here for today and tomorrow as the storm system plows on in. And there's another one back behind this. So the west coast continues to stay on the active side. Looking at our current watches and warnings, we do have some snow advisories and winter weather advisories here in the purple here across portions of the, the Great Lakes area up here around the Appalachians, a little bit up here in the Montana. Some pretty windy conditions out here with this tan out here and a little bit of interior fog, which really not bad here across most of the nation. So if you have any travel plans on your Saturday, uh, not looking bad at all. Now looking at the big picture, we got big high pressure here, but it is plenty cold. We got temperatures below freezing there in Minneapolis at five below. It's uh, sitting at uh, 14 degrees over near Chicago. It is down to 30 degrees down in Metro Atlanta this morning. So uh, very cold. A little bit of snow there in the northeast, but nothing that should be too big of a problem here. So JFK, Atlanta, Hartsville, Jackson, Chicago here, not looking too bad there. Heading on down to DFW, to Dallas. All the big hubs are looking pretty good. West Coast, uh, Northern California up towards Seattle. Seattle could see some weather-related delays today. That's really my only big trouble travel hot spot here for today as far as weather-related issues. Now, looking out here on the West Coast, Eureka, boy, they're getting plowed with some pretty good heavy rains. Again, a few rumbles of thunder, not out of the question on this as this stuff starts to move on in. And it looks like that uh, threat for thunderstorms on the West Coast is going to continue for uh, not only today, but probably for tomorrow as well. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Storms Prediction Center, and we'll take a look at that thunderstorm threat here uh, expected. Now, right now, for your day one outlook, and this is your day one outlook, you can see everything's pretty much out here out on the West Coast. Now, that's going to change as we go into this new work week, but for right now, it uh, looks like we're talking about predominantly Oregon stretching all the way down into Northern California, where we're showing it right now. Uh, getting hit with the thunderstorms. Now, as we look at your day two outlook, the day two outlook pretty much keeps it the same area, shifts it slightly further up toward the north. So we're talking about getting up toward uh, Washington State and coming on down toward Northern California. So right along the coastal areas there, again, as that storm system continues to plow into that zone. Then as we go out to day three, we'll start to shift this a little bit. We'll start to turn our attention here toward the middle of the country. And I'm going to be watching this very closely over the next couple of days. I think we're going to see uh, thunderstorms uh, increasing or a uh, possibility of thunderstorms really out through the end of the year. And it's just a question of whether any of these thunderstorms potentially become severe. Now, I don't see anything out there big time on the models, which I'll show you in a second, but there's a few that, you know, marginal, maybe slight risk of severe weather that could come at us at, as we wrap up 2024 before that real cold air uh, returns back into the area. Now, as far as excessive rainfall totals, the only thing out there right now is their day three. So we're talking about heading out toward Monday going into Tuesday morning. That's going to be out here on the West Coast, uh, Oregon, and down into uh, Northern California after getting hit for multiple days. Looks like it'll be enough to start triggering the possibility of some uh, isolated uh, flooding potential there in Northern California. So look out for that in that particular area uh, as we go into the start of the new very abbreviated work week, obviously, because of the holiday coming up. 
All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the hazards outlook here. Again, this is going to be updated here later today, and everything's been tracking out here on the West Coast, uh, predominantly dealing with basically heavy rains, gusty winds, and heavy precipitation and heavy mountain snows. This will get updated here later today, and then we might see some more activity here uh, starting to shift toward the east, especially as we look further out in that three to seven day window here across the eastern portion of the United States. Now, as far as the short term, we're going to look at the high resolution model here as we always do. That's our hyper sensitive uh, model here that kind of picks up on everything going on. And really, it's going to be pretty quiet. We got a little bit of precipitation here in the east that's kind of exiting on out. It's going to be predominantly a west coast thing here over the next 40 hours. So as I said, this weekend for any travelers, really not looking all that bad here. So let's go take this on through. You see that precipitation moving in out of the west coast to Washington State down through Oregon. Okay, we have a little bit of lake effect snows going on here. You can see just a little bit coming off the lake plumes there. Uh, but for the most part, most of the country not looking too bad as that system tracks up along the northern area into Montana going into your Sunday morning. So Sunday morning, we have some more moisture coming out here on the west coast. Again, remember that thunderstorm uh, threat was shifting a little bit further toward the north because that next storm system is tracking just a little bit further to the north. And then we continue this on throughout the day on Sunday. Again, we got that system plowing in on the west coast, that other system. And uh, that little weak system there tracking what came in uh, today, uh, tracking there in, in the north, kind of falling apart. What's left of it, just a little bit of light snow there across portions of North Dakota and into Minnesota. But that's about it. Uh, looking pretty quiet. We're going to stay active out here on the west coast, okay? So anywhere from uh, Seattle down into uh, Oregon and down into just north of San Francisco, uh, anybody traveling in that location could see some weather-related delays. But for most of the nation... Can't blame it on the weather, other than maybe a little chilly out here in the east that should cause you any travel headaches there uh, for the weekend. All right, let's go ahead and talk about that jet stream because this thing has really been a pain in my backside watching this thing over the recent days. Uh, just kind of getting a, kind of get an idea of what it's going to do because it's they've been kind of out of phase. Uh, jet streams kind of bumping into each other. It's been really difficult to watch how things are going to evolve. Now, what's going to happen, first off, is we're saying goodbye to this cold air. This cold air that's been sitting in the east, it's moving on out of here. We're not going to worry about that. Too much and then we're going to see a, a bit of a zonal flow in here uh for a few days here as we go in toward christmas so uh as we go in toward christmas we'll have that zonal flow kind of come in here and then we got these little little small little systems that are going to come on through we got uh, a little i see a little bit of a, a troughiness here there's a little bit of uh, energy here that's coming on out on christmas day and uh that'll be watched later in the week so as this pulls on out that little that little low pulls out in here in the south going into the 27th this one may set up Maybe a few thunderstorms. Don't know if it'll be severe on that or not. Doesn't look as nearly as robust as it did yesterday, but just something I'm going to watch as that kicks on out. And then there's another one that <laughs> spins up on its heels right behind that going into the 28th. So we got two little small systems there uh, for this week. So we got these little systems that are going to kind of pull up uh, across the south central United States, kind of swing up into the northeast. And then as we go into the go into this upcoming uh, new year, getting ready to start, going into the next week, going into the 30th and the 31st, we're going to start opening up the gates here and bring up some uh, some cold air. Looks like we're going to see some cold air that's going to come in over the poles and beat back that warm air over Canada, uh, which you're going to have uh, for the 28th and 29th. It's going to be pretty mild up there. And this will start diving in, into, into the United States going into the new year. So you see this cold pattern starts to evolve. And it looks like that's going to stay there as we wrap up this model run here. It kind of stays in place. So it's going to turn cold once again across the east. And then... There's another reinforcing shot coming here on the on the tail end that's a little bit further to the west. Now, what's interesting about this, one of the reasons why we haven't been getting major storm systems has been the configuration of the jet stream. If what we've been basically getting has been getting these systems that have been doing like this. So we the low pressure systems are forming or basically out into the out into the Atlantic. If we start getting something where we start getting a jet stream doing something like this, that's a little bit further uh, to the to the uh, west there, then it starts open up the possibility of some storm systems developing out of the Gulf of Mexico, which of course can track up the eastern seaboard. That kind of scenario, that really opens up the door for potential winter storms and things like that, nor'easters. Just have not seen that uh, here so far this uh, early winter, and, uh, and we'll see if that continues. And today, by the way, is the first official day of winter, which started this morning. Now let's go ahead and talk about the precipitation outlook here as we take a look at the cold air retreating out of the northeast. Again, we'll say goodbye to that. Uh, going into the 23rd, we have a little weak system, that one that's coming out of the west coast. We'll dump a little bit of snow here uh, the day before Christmas Eve across the Great Lakes. We get a little snow here falling across the Intermountain region here on the 23rd. 
Let's check out the 24th, Christmas Eve. How's that looking for Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve morning, well, we get a little snow here across portions of New England. All right, we get a little snow out here in the higher elevations of the Mountain West going into Christmas Eve. All right, that looks pretty decent. And going into Christmas Day, this is going into Christmas Eve. This is midnight here. Looks like we got some snow here uh, across Idaho into Nevada, Utah. Nothing near, yeah, a little snow in the main, a little bit there. But as we go into Christmas Day, let's check out Christmas Day here. Uh, not showing a whole lot there. Just a little bit across the mountains of Colorado into Christmas Day, and that's about it. So, white Christmas fans, it was pretty limited this year, that's for sure. Did, did not see a whole lot out there uh, as far as the snow is concerned. All right, let's go back here forward to the week here. We're going to watch this next little system coming here. We'll watch this closely uh, going into Friday the 27th. So, we'll see, probably may see a few thunderstorms in with this uh, right now. And we'll see if it's going to be uh, severe or not. I'll show you the thunderstorm tracker here in just a second as that pushes off toward the east there. And then we'll see another one pull in behind that one uh, going into the 30th here. That pushes on out. And then we'll see the cold air start to plow down to the south. Here's our big front here coming down to the south. We've got the cold air uh, funneling back in here as we head toward January 1st, starting 2025. It uh, looks like for those uh, for new, wel welcoming the New Year's into New York City, appears that uh, hopefully this rain stays down to the south. But it looks like it should be relatively mild. It should be that cold up there in New York City as they welcome in the new year. And then it looks like the cold air just rushes on in back behind this going in toward the second. As you see, a lot of snow here across the, the Great Lakes as well as, the, as into the Smokies as well going in toward the second. And it uh, looks like that cold trend just kind of sets in there, just sets up shop. Look how far south as we go toward the third, that freezing line is way down here south, south Georgia, south Alabama into the deep south. So we're going to have some plenty of cold air coming in here across the eastern third of the United States. Then on the tail end of this run a little bit, it starts to pull out and we see another shot coming down, except this one is further to the west on where it's coming down to. Again, that's something to see if that's a trend or not. Again, this is 360, mi 60, 360 miles, 360 day hours out here. If it if it if this kind of charge comes in with a jet stream, then it may open up the Gulf of Mexico for something to watch uh, later in the month. Again, it is speculative at this point, way far out. But uh, seeing that that jet stream shifts a little bit is a big deal because that can make weather a little more interesting uh, when it comes to winter storms across the United States. Again, we're going to talk about the thunderstorms here. I'm looking at the K index. This takes a look at a number of parameters that gives you the potential for thunderstorms. And what I'm going to be watching here, uh, at least initially, is going to be going in toward the south. So we're going to see this system here. This little system here, this is the one I'll be watching to see uh, if we get any severe weather. Right now, I think if we get anything, I'm thinking it's in the marginal category maybe a slight risk there, but it looks like we get some sort of little squall line coming through the southeast uh, going into the 27th. And then we get another one here kind of coming into the 29th. So we got a couple of days here where we might see some severe weather. Uh, where I'm going to be watching it the most will be where it's the warmest. Obviously, right along the Gulf Coast areas there from Louisiana over toward the Florida Panhandle. I'll be watching that very closely. But look what happens here with that big pattern shift comes our way. That pulls on out and then all right, look at that. Wow, it gets cold. We don't get any thunderstorms at all. Don't see how it just kind of clears on out? Yeah, big time. That's a big change. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about precipitation totals here. We're going to take out the short term here for 72 hours. Really not seeing a whole lot except for out toward the West Coast. So for the next three days, uh, obviously we got some rains out here on the West Coast. Not overly bad, not that heavy. Looks like the heavy stuff doesn't kick in until Monday. We get a little bit of lake effect snows here across the Great Lakes. That's about, there, about it there for the next 72 hours. And then we'll take you all the way out to, to 10 days. We'll go out to 240. You can see that next to those little systems here in the south. That'll be dumping some rain here across the southeast, back into the south central portion of the United States, back toward Texas. And then we really open up the floodgates out here on the west coast. Some very heavy rains out there uh, with the next uh, series of systems as we go from day three through seven out on the west coast. Snowfall, not going to see a whole lot of that, that's for sure. We'll go out to the next three days here. Uh, taking you right up into almost Christmas Eve here. We'll take you out to right about there. Again, that's going into uh, uh, right the, before Christmas Eve starts. We get a little snow here across the Great Lakes. Uh, we got a little snow out here in the Inner Mountain, but really not a whole lot there. And then as we go out to day 10, we get a little snow falling across the Northeast on Christmas Eve. And then we get a little snow falling across the, some portions of the Inner Mountain region on Christmas Day and a little bit out there. But that's about it, and it's not going to amount to a whole lot. So if we go up to about 240 again, I'll take you out to 10 days here. Uh, the heaviest snows are going to be definitely out here in the inner mountain region. Uh, the Cascades and Sierra Nevada will continue to get their snow depths added to there. But overall, not looking at any major snows here as we wrap up 2024, except for the higher mountains out into the west. 
Now, the big story here we're going to continue to watch is the cold air, okay? for Obviously, we've got the cold air here in the east right now. Uh, above normal temperatures out in the west for the moment, okay? So this is going to clearly uh, clear on out as we head toward Christmas Day. So by the time we head toward Christmas Day, and I'll stop this on Christmas Day here. I'll show you what's left of the cold air here as we go toward Christmas. So this is Christmas morning right here. And you can see the only place we're holding on to the cold air is a little bit here, just along the East Coast, a big bulk of the country here above normal. And especially Canada heading into the next week is going to be quite uh, warm by their standards. Not warm per se, but definitely above normal for December. What we're going to see, though, as we head toward the first is we, it's going to continue most of this week. You see how warm it is up in Canada and across the United States for this entire week. But the tail end of this, it looks like we start to see some cold air just above the pole and north of Alaska. It's going to start to break in here and push back that milder air out of Canada. And it's going to make a beeline here for the United States. And see how quickly that warm air kind of gets eroded away there across Canada. And it dumps right into the right into the eastern part of the United States going into the first and second. So we look much colder here across the United States going into the, the second of January. You clearly see that, especially across the southeast, well, well above normal here. We're a little bit milder out here in the west, but not even a ton. It's just a little bit above, not really that bright red there. And that stays in place here for a while. Looks like going in toward the fifth. It looks like uh, colder here in the east, uh, maybe slightly above normal here in the west, but not bad. But we definitely beat back that very warm temperatures there across Canada. And uh, we'll continue. It looks like some sort of, of a polar tap there. Uh, coming out of the Arctic and coming into Canada as we go into the new year. So clearly seeing a pattern change taking place there as we go into the new year. So let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Climate Prediction Center. We're going to wrap this all up for you here on this update. And as you can see, the 26th to the 30th, yeah, coast to coast, we're, we're balmy here. We're pretty warm here. And that continues right through the 3rd. Although, again, looking at the indications here of the 2nd, this map probably going to change here a little bit. Now, where they do show it is on the three to four week, and I'll show you that here in a second. Precipitation-wise, we stay fairly active except for the northeast and the southwest, especially out here in the west. The six to ten day precipitation total is looking pretty good, and it stays fairly active here across most of the country except for, again, the southwest and a little bit up into the northeast. Now, here's the three to four week outlook here. This is where the big change comes in, January 4th through the 17th. That really opens up the dates here. So that, that uh, earlier map here, that 8 to 14 day is going to change today as we're anticipating this colder pattern to settle up here across uh, pretty much two-thirds of the country except for portions up here of the western portion of the United States. Precipitation-wise, with that cold air, we're shutting off the the precipitation here except for the high plains here we're looking at below normal precipitation here for most of the country now i go back to my other point there if that jet stream shifts this way and we get a trough that's digging down this way to where it opens up the gulf of mexico well hey this might change a little bit but for right now climate prediction center says nope we're going to keep that cold pattern in where that cold air continues to stay like this and we don't tap any Gulf of Mexico moisture, thus no big no storm storms or winter storms to worry about here as far as the first week of January is concerned. Of course, that is all subject to change, and that's why you have yours truly here to keep you updated. <laughs> keep on top of this thing and see how things are going to be here as we get ready to enter into 2025. Can't believe you're going to start a new year. What a great year for us here at Weather Nerds. Boy, it's been a really awesome year. We've gotten over 5,000 new subscribers here on the channel. It's great to see it's kind of growing a little bit. And again, if you'd like to be part of the weather update and you'd like to get these in part of your YouTube feed, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, do all that good stuff. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. I really appreciate you guys helping to support the channel here. All right, that's your Saturday update. You guys take it easy if you can stay safe and we'll see you in the next report. Bye guys.